All right. Good afternoon, Andrew. Nice to have you on and meet you finally after all our conversations back and forth. Yeah, uh, thanks, Andrew. A brief bio here, and if there's anything that you would like to add following, um, then you can do that. So, Andrew is originally from southeast or southeastern Wisconsin and graduated from Carroll University with his DPT in 2015. From there, he has completed an orthopedic residency program and has relocated a few times in the past few years. He has a passion for exercise, wellness, and enjoys working with patients trying to get them back to exercise, which is awesome because it's all about bringing it into the lifestyle, I think. Um, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I think um, just over the last few years, through my own sort of... Um, Experimenting with myself, I have just come to find out how important nutrition plays a role in all of this. Um, and I've heard people tell me before, you can't outwork or out exercise a poor diet. And I always thought that uh, maybe wasn't true or didn't apply to me. And then I've, I've recently started to learn that that is very true. And um, it's a big factor. Yeah, huge. Um, so would you say that this is your uh, niche or specialization right now? Is that what you're kind of focusing on with your patient population? Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm trying to. Um, I think in my day-to-day -day clinic, clinic life, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, and I see a big variation um, in the willingness to, um, to accept or, or buy into nutritional lifestyle changes depending on which clinic I'm working in and which um, like demographic of patients that I'm working with, I find different challenges, um, whether that's like financial or, or whatnot or family situations. But yeah, I think I have this huge passion for nutrition and, um, and have a certification in nutrition. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I would say that's like a niche that I'm, I'm trying to get myself into. I'll jump ahead. I usually ask this question a little bit later, but do you find yourself like, what are some nutrition tips um, that are really helpful yeah. for someone healing from an injury? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I like to sometimes use the, use the term pro tip um, when I'm trying to give, give somebody some information. Um, but I think a lot of what's out there in either social media or on commercials or just information that you hear stuff on Facebook is about removing things from your diet that are bad from you mm -hmm. and I feel like that's hard for people to do whether they whether it's like sweets that they enjoy or a food that they enjoy it's hard for them to take that out something that they're used to having and just completely restrict themselves of it mm -hmm. so I don't recommend that they do that um, I try to go the exact opposite and say well instead of taking things away and restricting what you're doing let's make some positive additions to what you're already doing. Like if you're eating no servings of vegetables, before we even talk about removing something, let's get you eating two more servings of vegetables a day. Or I noticed you're only drinking two gl glasses of water a day. Let's get you drinking some more and make positive changes in ads rather than taking the bad things away. Um, I love that. Personally, I actually, I was doing a trade with, um, uh, a personal trainer and she had her nutrition certification uh, a while back. Her name's Rachel. She's amazing. Yeah. And um, she did something similar. So for me, I actually was not eating enough like uh, vegetables that were like starchy carbs, for example. Sure. So I was always craving sugar, sugary stuff for like that, like glucose fix for just carbohydrates because I'm super active. So yeah. All, all I did was, was I added in sweet potatoes in the morning mm -hmm. and, or like a squash or something throughout the day and, and bananas, which for some reason I just thought I should stay away from because you always hear they're just sugar anyways, but they do yeah. have, I mean, if you're going to have banana versus uh, sugar, like just candy sugar, obviously banana wins. So yeah. I just add those. And then naturally I started eating less sugar because I was getting my, my fix. That, that, that makes sense. what you're saying? Yeah, Allison, that's exactly what I'm saying. And it's funny you mentioned that because I've sort of gone through a similar thing myself and actually really recently with the bananas where I was like, I used to eat them all the time when I was uh, competing in track in college. And um, this is like my, part of my meat day routine or whatnot, pre-race thing. And I always felt great. But then as I, as my activity level maybe has decreased a little bit, not doing athletics, I've tried to cut those more high glycemic foods like banana, bananas out of my diet a little bit. 
But then I recently have noticed that um, I've been having trouble balancing or maintaining my electrolyte balance with oh. potassium and sodium because I'm trying not to like add too much salt to my foods and whatnot. So I actually have noticed that I feel better when I do exactly what you said, where uh, like have the bananas or have some squash or something. And then I've actually started salting one of my meals per day, which I normally don't do mm -hmm. because um, I've noticed I've been getting a little dehydrated or I guess uh, flushing myself out by drinking plenty of water, but not getting enough sodium in my diet or how much uh, activity and sweat I have. So, uh huh. I, yeah. Yeah, we could go on for a while here. We won't bore you guys, but yeah, I, I started adding, um, and I don't know if this is for better or worse, but the non electrolyte tablets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. I was, because uh, I teach a lot of hot yoga classes, yeah. so, and then I take them myself, so always sweating and um, I was drinking a ton of water but never feeling replenished mm -hmm. and I started adding those tablets um, I just only like once a day or maybe a few times a week whenever I teach a hot class made a world of difference definitely yeah I've, I'm going through that same process right now I know exactly what you mean yeah awesome love it so tell me, um, you know, as a physical therapist, as someone who's passionate about nutrition and all this exercise, what does wellness mean to you? Um, that's, that's a good question. And I would say that wellness to me, um, in my definition of it, has probably changed over the past several years since I was in school, since I got out of school. And um, so now what I usually tell people when I talk about wellness is I break it down into like four major categories. Mm -hmm. um, and those being stress management. So how you manage the stressors in your life, whatever those might be, whether that's work, family, children, um, nutrition. So what you put in your body is the second one. Mobility or mobility and exercise, physical activity is the third one. And then your sleeping habits mm -hmm. as the fourth one. So those are the four categories of wellness that you want I think you want to try and hit on all of those and I think there are other things that you can like maybe put under each of those some people talk about spiritual health or um, like self-reflection and I think depending on how you describe it they can all sort of fit into those four categories um, so I think just trying to be well-rounded in all of those areas is how I define wellness yeah yeah beautiful I love that all those areas so important um, and if you're really lacking in one, it can definitely impact like your ability to heal for injury or even just, you know, get started on a good nutrition program. If you're so stressed out, like how can you even yeah. fathom doing that? Right. So um, how do you work this wellness into um, your patient care or um, your business itself? Yeah. Um, so how I work it into patient care, like trying to focus on wellness is I think um, I think it kind of maybe surprises patients that have had physical therapy somewhere else before. If somebody, say, for example, comes into our clinic or into my clinic and they are what I would consider highly irritable, they have high severity of symptoms, it doesn't take much to aggravate their symptoms, um, we don't just start doing exercises for their, their shoulder, for example, if they're coming in with shoulder pain we actually stay far away from their shoulder and don't even, don't even go near it. Um, so in terms of physical activity, we'll start using other parts of their body and promoting them to just get doing things that don't hurt them. Mm -hmm. And then while that irritability is there, we'll start to talk about those other things like, mm -hmm. okay, what can we do right now to just get you to the point where you can get more sleep? Cause it sounds like you're not sleeping well mm -hmm. or, okay, tell me about how you've been eating since you hurt your shoulder. Cause I know for me, when I have had surgeries in the past or when I'm unable to exercise for whatever reason, I tend to eat worse mm -hmm. because all I want to do is, is eat sweets or eat whatever, eat cookies or something. Dopamine fix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when I am, yeah, when I'm more active and around people that are more active, I want to sustain, I don't know, be able to sustain that level of performance. I have to eat better. So, so I do that. So I think that's how just like, um, dispelling maybe what that patient's expectation was of the physical therapy they were getting themselves into and trying to just promote positive lifestyle changes to help them heal and and then we'll get to the exercise for the shoulder piece when when they're able to tolerate it yeah but it all fuels the healing of the shoulder in the end mm -hmm. because it truly is a, a lifestyle like 
because that's information that it can take uh, when their shoulders heal and hopefully prevent future injury, injury. And I love that you touched on that point because there's so many people that don't understand really what physical therapy can truly entail and yeah. it's really great to promote that awareness. Yeah, you're uh, right. So, you know, as um, you're working in a clinic and you're also, you know, doing your own business, uh, what are the challenges that you're facing yourself? Um, like with trying to, trying to start that business? Yeah, or incorporating the wellness into your life or the mm -hmm. two together. Yeah. Um, I think in like challenges in, uh, in trying to incorporate the wellness is uh, I feel like that's something that, um, I don't know, maybe the current healthcare model doesn't allow us a lot to like to do a lot in the way physical therapy currently is like perceived or, or thought of what you're doing in physical therapy. It's hard to spend a lot of time doing that stuff with patients because um, either you don't get the time or, um, or it's just, it's just hard to work that into their, their treatment because maybe it's not something that insurance will reimburse for or, or something like that. Um, so that's been one change. And then trying to create or start my own business outside of this, I think some of the main challenges that I'm facing are time is definitely a factor, but I sort of anticipated that going in. Um, I think one of the main ones is, and I wrote down a little note here, so I didn't forget this, um, like the fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. because there's so much that I'm getting myself into that is outside of my comfort zone. And, um, like being comfortable with or being willing to learn um, and even get help from other people on things that I don't really have an expertise in. Um, sort of like you and I were talking about before this, getting some, some um, information from other people who have been there and have done it mm -hmm. because that's, that's not my area of expertise. And uh, it's hard for me to ask for help sometimes because I, I feel like I should be able to do it and I want to do it on my own to say I did it. But um, I know that's not going to help me do what I want to do as quickly as I want to do it. I could maybe do it, but it's going to take me a long, long time. Um, so, so, yeah, that's probably the main challenge on that side. I think that's huge. And thank you so much for sharing because, I mean, even our, our patients, right, they might feel the same way about their body. Like, I, I should know what to do for my shoulder. I shouldn't have to go ask help or I should know how to fix it or that might, it might be hard for them. And, and just, you know, a message to them, like, I think we all feel this way and it's super relatable and but asking for help just speeds things along and also from what I've learned is it expands my mind like mm -hmm. or triggers ideas uh, within myself that I might not have gotten to till like maybe a year or so down the road so yeah um, yeah you can find like if you if you say uh, I should know what to do to fix myself I mean you can find just about any thing you want online if you look up like oh what exercises should I do for I don't know shoulder pain mm -hmm. but that's not what physical therapy is just doing mm -hmm. these exercises for these symptoms there's so much more that goes into it and there's so much um, there's so much like fine-tuning I guess that's why we sort of consider it like an art mm -hmm. there's an art to to physical therapy and and to uh, like rehabilitating things so yeah wonderful uh, well uh, how do you incorporate some of these tips into your own life on the day to day? Yeah, good, uh, good question. Um, I think the, the one that I maybe have the hardest time with is um, the sleep. Like if I'm looking at my four categories, like the sleep category, um, cause I have so much stuff that I'm trying to get done. I probably don't often get enough sleep myself, but then of course I'm trying to get other people to sleep more so that they can heal. Um, so I think there's a fine balance between that, but I try to make it pretty consistent, go to bed roughly at the same time and wake up roughly at the same time regularly, even on the weekends. If I can sleep in, I try to keep it relatively consistent because if you get into a good routine, your body will feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one that I'm, have been spending the most time on because I've always been exercising regularly and whatnot. I think the stress management piece and not getting so working and not get so worked up over things that are outside of my control mm -hmm. is probably the one that I've been spending the most time on improving at and, um, and looking to find people who 
who maybe don't get real worked up over something that I maybe do get worked up over and sort of just uh, model after them and what they're doing. Um, and I think what's actually been helping me do that is just taking some time to relax and not burn the candle at both ends all the time has helped me a lot. And um, I feel a lot, a lot better by doing that. I think those are some huge uh, practical advice there. First of all, the awareness, uh, noticing what's going on and then taking action, reducing the stress, but then also modeling after other people that are succeeding in the area that you want to go. All those really yeah. super helpful tips. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing. Any other parting words of wisdom or advice that you'd like to share today? Um, I think, um, being able, well, I talked a little bit before about stepping outside of your comfort zone to, um, like to, to ask for help or whatever it might be. So that's something that's probably challenging for most of us is going outside of our comfort zone. And, and I mean, for patients coming into the clinic, it's often uncomfortable for them coming in. And, um, but we know they won't get better if they don't come outside their comfort zone and come into the clinic. We have to sort of do the same thing is be willing to step outside of our comfort zone and do whatever that is, try new foods or ask, ask for help, do something that you haven't done. And I think what has helped me is to have something visible each day. So I actually um, wanted to remind myself of that. So I went and changed the background on my screen on my phone ah. that says uh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone awesome. to just remind myself each day to, to push myself uh, each day to do that. And then um, I, I think the other one, maybe it's uh, counter to what I just said, but is to just be patient and trust the process because I think in terms of like learning things and gaining insight from all these things you're trying to do, whether it's create a business or exercise, the, the real benefit is gained in the process and in the adventure, not in the destination of where you're trying to get, but, um, but in the process of getting there. The journey. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's a wonderful ending. Is that, is that on my end or your end? <laughs> I, what's that? Do you hear a beeping? Uh, I hear it. I just don't, I don't think it's coming from anywhere in here. Oh, it might be. I did hear a little beep though. Might be on my end. Anyways, it was a wonderful end to you. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> to, no, that was, yeah, the, the journey is that's where, that's where the, what is it? The magic in the pudding or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how the ma where the magic happens. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. thank you so much. So how can um, anyone or everyone get a hold of you? Uh, do you have a website, email? Yeah, so the website is actually in the process of being created. So the, um, the like health and wellness coaching business that I'm creating is going to be called All Journeys Fitness mm -hmm. um, with the intention of that meaning like open to everybody, uh, everybody's welcome type of thing because everybody has a different journey that they're on. Um, but so, so that will be the, um, the name. The website isn't made yet. But my, probably the easiest way to get in contact with me through, would either be through Facebook, just uh, first name Andrew, last name Fix, F-I-X, or through email. Um, and my email is just andrewfix.pt, as in physical therapist, at gmail.com. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your words of wisdom and taking your time out of today to um, be on this. Yeah. Thanks for the invites to, um, to come chat with you. And um, and hopefully anybody who's watching this gets uh, a piece of value out of it. Thanks. Oh, I hope so. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. You too.